Hello, Letterheads. Today, we are talking about tomorrow's world of transport and the rise of car sharing. Not the hopper rides at Glastonbury with a neighbouring hippie festival goer kind. I'm talking about the click and collect for a day. Like, borrow my doggy for cars. <coughs> and car companies like Audi have envisioned what could be a very cool future of car share. Before we go any further, please do make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're feeling especially generous, then please do sign up to our Patreon page because we would love to have more support from you guys at home. All right, let's get on with it. Over the course of my lifetime, albeit not very long, but still notable, I've witnessed car sharing grow in popularity, and rightly so. It's fairly cheap, convenient, and a viable option for city dwellers like me who don't want to pay a grand on insurance for a car that I'd probably use about five times a year. That is essential money to be spent on a high-end London-priced barista coffee. There you go, that's $37. And now, with the trending notion of the Great Reset, it all fits rather nicely with the predicted new age of shared economy that is being touted as fundamental to all our futures. You will own nothing and you will be happy, they say. Suffocation of pots and pans crammed in the cupboard will be no more. And perhaps neither will the ownership of cars. This is all predicted to happen by 2030, which is a mere nine years away. It can't be so soon, can it? Are we really headed that way? The pandemic has created a huge disruption to the way we live, work, travel, even commute. Hands up anybody who's got Zoom fatigue and companies are responding. The business of business is changing and big car corporations are clued up and already planning for this monumental shift in mobility. The overall idea of car share may sound tainted and quite depressing for all you proud owners out there, but it doesn't have to be because there is loads of exciting stuff happening that most people don't even know about. Take a look at the Audi AI range, an incredible collective of concept cars presented way back in 2019. Bearing in mind, this is nothing new. Audi is way ahead of the curve with four tantalizing options, each tailor made for a very specific use case. Check out the AI trail, an autonomous off-road electric car with drones for headlights, five to be precise, and it's all available at a click of a button ready to go. Imagine a few years from now, rocking up at the Amazon rainforest for your family holiday, as you do, and load up the app, hail one of these down, and go out for a fun day. In fact, this car feels like a precursor to a real life Jurassic Park being launched. Audi, if you know anything we don't, please do get in touch because I'm well up for meeting a Brachiosaurus. But that's not all. Oh no, don't fancy an off-roader? Well, take your pick from a high-performance electric sports car that blurs the lines between road and racetrack to cruise off into the sunset. Sit back in an autonomous luxury sedan that oozes the ambience of a first-class airline cabin that glides effortlessly to your chosen destination. Or opt for an urban electric, an oh-so-stylish companion for the city. Which of the four take your fancy? Comment below, because my dibs is on the luxury sedan. Audi have done the hard work and envisaged a not-so-distant world where we rent the car that we need on that given day. What this means is that we get to spend more time in really exciting, super-specialised vehicles instead of the jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none blobs most everyday folk are stuck with these days. Looking at these four cars is rather exciting because it's just a snippet of what we could have at our disposal in the future. It makes the idea of car sharing just a little more luxurious than what it currently is. Let's be real, getting one of these cars for a day is a trip in itself. Who cares where you're going? Just get in the car. But could car sharing really be the future? Well, let's take a look at the pros and cons. Kicking it off with the pros. Number one is simple, flexible and economical with no strings attached. Want to go out for a beer after a hard day's work? Well, book your car at the click of a button, leave it at your destination, have a few bevs, and then jump on the train or bus to get yourself home. In fact, scrap that. Surely you could get the luxurious AI con back, piss as a fart, and let it autonomously escort you home so your less drunk mate doesn't have to take one for the team and leave the group sesh early. I am leaving, and you can't stop me. I'm packing my bags. We've got to think of the real life situation here, guys. Number two. It's there when you need it. Our city folk are spoilt for choice these days with transport options that make so much more sense than a road hogging car for one. I know I joke about driving a car up to the pub, but most days we just don't need to use them. But on the occasion that we do, it's right there and ready to go on a street near you. And that makes so much more sense for overcrowded cities. Most cars are parked up for about 95% of the day. 
What a waste of precious space. Number three. As you've seen by the lovely selection from Audi, you can pick and choose a car that you never dreamed of driving. Need to do a weekly shop? Need a car to zip around the city? Sick of the rat race and in need of a wild escape? There are different options for different needs of travel right at your fingertips. Number four, you don't need to think about repairs, refueling, paying for insurance, or fighting for precious residential parking permits. There's a lot of mitigated costs here, people. And number five, which is the most important, it's kinder to the planet. A lower volume of cars that can cater to a mass of people means less vehicles being manufactured, which, as we know, is very energy intensive. It creates far less air pollution in our cities and opens up way more space. Captain Planet, mother However, this isn't a totally biased video. Car sharing isn't for everyone, and there are definitely some cons here. Firstly, for many of you at home who need to drive every day or commute long distances for work, car sharing in reality is going to get quite expensive. Also, what about the logistical sharing side of things? After a devastating year of a global pandemic of biblical proportions, we've all been left mentally scarred, and the idea of sharing is going to be a little tricky to instill back into us all. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and get the... How are people going to feel about jumping in a car that's had numerous others in it beforehand? Cleanliness, germs and risk of infection is going to be a barrier for people. And finally, although many of us are exemplary model drivers, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad out there too. Got a Bitcoin. Essentially, there's good and bad, whichever way you look at it. But you can't deny that there is a need for a mobility shift. Take a look at China as a prime example. Already they're filled to the brim with cars in their cities. Beijing has had to impose annual quotas on issuing new license plates due to the sheer demand, making them more costly than a car. In 2019, 2.8 million people competed for 6,460 license plates. It's astonishing. Some people have had to wait in excess of up to seven years. Imagine being told you have to enter a license plate lottery just to get a car in the city and hope for the best. They are desperate for a viable alternative. And at the rate at which our cities are filling up as the population rises, we too need to start looking at other options. And like Gareth Gates' questionable hairdo in the early noughties, God love him, global urbanization is an irreversible trend. Sick reference though, bro. Oh, thanks, bud. Dude, your references are out of control. Everyone knows that. According to Statista, by 2050, two thirds of the world's population will be living in cities. That is a hell of a lot of people in an incredibly condensed area. Not everybody is going to be able to own a car because there's just not going to be anywhere to put it. However, the idea of owning a car for millennials and Gen Zers isn't as important as it used to be, thanks to the fairly new concept of ride shares like Uber and Lyft. Today, Uber has an estimated net worth of around 15 billion dollars with over 93 million monthly active users worldwide. Priorities are shifting and the younger generation are falling out of love with car ownership. Don't care. In fact, we have a lower rate of car ownership than previous generations of our age. Only 76% of 20 to 24 year olds hold a driver's license. That's down from 82% in 2008. Buying the latest smartphone or spending money on traveling are now valued far higher up the list than investing in a car. I'm going to buy a car today. Unless you live out in the sticks, car purchases are happening much later in life. So. For car companies to compete, they need to sell mobility as well as the physical product. It's a huge market to be tapped into. Young consumers are expecting everything faster, easier, and more effortless than ever before. Take Daimler, for example, who are responding to exactly that. They're the parent company of Mercedes, and for the past 10 years, they have been on a rampage buying up mobility apps and startups. Why? Daimler expects the not so different future to be a world of mobility as a service where we have personalized on-demand transport. Their vision is to be able to get you from anywhere in the country to anywhere else in the country using just one app. Picture this, you open the app, put your destination in, it provides you with a few different options, a bit like Google Maps does, and you pick one. Suddenly, a robot car turns up and takes you to the station, where a train takes you to the city closest to your destination. And on the other end, there's a scooter waiting to ferry you for the last few miles of your journey. Or better yet, a Volocopter air taxi. Have you seen one of these before? A self-flying taxi. 
they are working on some mad stuff in Germany. Daimler partnered partner with the creators of Volocopter because they can see air taxis as being an important solution to the chronic congestion problem in our cities. And although it looks like a ride for the privileged few, they want to integrate it to make it available just like you'd hail an Uber. Pretty cool. It all sounds pretty great, right? And so different to where we currently are. But again, harking back to the Great Reset, if there was ever a time to mix up the status quo, it's now. As the world starts to reopen and return to a new normal, there's a small yet urgent window of opportunity to progress with new forms of mobility and combat the climate crisis we face. So, as strange and slightly terrifying as the concept of the drone-like air taxis are, they will soon be a part of our daily lives. Like the early days of cars, people were scared of these new machines. So much so that a man would have to run out in front waving a red flag just to let everyone know it was coming. We've come a long way to the point where we can send humans into space and pretty regularly. Of course a passenger drone or flying car is in our grasp. So we know that car sharing and multimodal services with some very exciting tech are just around the corner. But what else could we see? High speed travel is a big one. Already in places like Japan, there's the Shinkansen or bullet train that is powered by superconducting magnets that forces the carriages to levitate and travel at top speeds of 199 miles per hour. Now this kind of technology will continue to grow. Virgin is working on high loop travel, with development happening in Nevada to enable travel at jet-like speeds. A Boeing 747 averages at around 540 miles per hour at cruising altitude, but the Hyperloop could top at around 640 miles per hour, making it a potentially faster and cleaner travel alternative. Advanced AI isn't just being used for self-driving cars. As Norway and Finland have shown, autonomous ships are possible and are expected to enter the market in the very near future. Rolls-Royce and Finferries have teamed up to create the world's first remote autonomous ferry, the Swan. How does it work? A Rolls-Royce intelligent awareness system fitted to the ship collects data and uses sensors that give a heightened awareness of its surroundings better than the human eye. The autonomous navigation system is a plug-in and play-esque fixture that can be fitted as an add-on to existing ships and lets a boat steer itself or lets someone tap in remotely. Pretty cool, right? Cabins on robot platforms are set to boom as they merge the boundaries between home, car, holiday home, entertainment space, workplace and hotel. Sounds a bit balmy, doesn't it? Audi, Itel Design and Airbus together have conceived the pop-up next, or should I say pop dot up next, that is designed for horizontal and vertical mobility. It's an extra light two-seater that has a one-size-fits-all design, meaning without you even having to step out of the cabin, you can travel on road, railway carriage, ship, vacuum tube or aerial vehicle. Bike lanes that use the sunlight to glow at nighttime is already a reality in Poland and it looks gorgeous, like something out of Avatar with the glowing forest. And it's all down to some really awesome track materials that can soak up sun in the day and give off light for over 10 hours at night. Loads more people have been taking to cycling and scooting through the pandemic, which, fingers crossed, is going to be sticking around. So, luminous pathways are bound to feature more and more as our cycle routes grow in numbers because not only does it look great, but it promotes safety and visibility to all of those who use it. Solar panel roads and pavements are being tested currently, and if feasible, could offer a no-brainer boost to local energy production to power lights and smart street infrastructure, charge EVs driving on it and melt ice and snow. In the Netherlands, Solar Road introduced solar road paving that is expected to collect 30,000 kilowatt hours annually for 100 meters. I really could go on, but it just proves the point that a new dawn has already begun, as all the above isn't just a pipe dream, it's all being worked on right now. The Great Reset is nigh, and with advancing technologies and consumer preferences changing, it seems the traditional days of car ownership and commuting is hanging in the balance. But with these jaw-dropping concepts manifesting, it makes our current norm sound rather dull, and less so something to be scared about and more so really excited. But what do you think? Could you see yourself jumping in a volocopter for a fast track to the office after sleeping in on your alarm? Do you like the sound of jumping in a pod that can take you from your home across skies, roads, rails and seas? Could we all own nothing and be happy? Let me know down in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and get yourself signed up to Patreon to help us make lots more videos to keep your eyes and ears entertained. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Thank you.